Security from Fisher Community College and Sleep I Have Chosen is the key for sleep needs by Emma Watson. I chose this piece because I, as a girl, relate to everything that Emma Watson mentioned. And she not only highlights the problem in this world, which is that men and women aren't treated equally, but she encourages everyone to try and solve this problem. And I think everyone needs to hear this speech. Okay. Today we are launching a campaign called He or She. I am reaching out to you because I need your help. We want to end gender inequality, and to do that, we need everyone to be involved. This is the first campaign of its kind at the UN. We want to try and galvanize as many men and boys as possible to be advocates for gender equality. And we don't just want to talk about it, but make sure it is tangible. I was appointed six months ago, and the more I have spoken about feminism, the more I re realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. If there's one thing I know for certain, it is that it has to stop. For the record, feminism by definition is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. It is the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. I started questioning gender-based assumptions when at eight, I was confused with being bo called bossy because I wanted to direct the plays we would put on for our friends, but the boys were not. When at 14, I started being sexualized by certain elements of the press. When at 15, my girlfriend started dropping out of the sports team because we didn't want to appear muscular. And when at 18, my male friends were unable to express their feelings. I decided I was a feminist, and this seemed uncomplicated to me. But my recent research has shown me that feminism has become an unpopular word. Apparently, I am among the ranks of women whose expressions are seen as too strong, too aggressive, isolating, anti-men, and unattractive. Why is the word such an uncomfortable one? I am from Britain and think and I think it is right that as a woman I am paid the same as my male counterparts. I think it is right that I should be able to make decisions about my own body. I think it is right that women be involved on my behalf in the policies and decision making of my country. I think it is right that socially I am afforded the same respect as men. But sadly I can say that there is no one country in the world where all women can expect to receive these rights. No country in the world can yet say they have reached higher achieve gender equality. These rights I consider to be human rights, but I am one of the lucky ones. My life is a sheer privilege because my parents didn't love me less because I was born, born a daughter. My school did not limit me because I was a girl. My mentors didn't assume I would go less far because I gave, might give birth to a child one day. These influencers were the gender equality ambassadors of the EU who I am today. They may not know it, but they are the inadvertent feminists who are changing the world today and we need more of those. And if you still hate the word, it is not the word that is important, but the idea and the ambition behind it. Because not all women have been afforded the same rights that I have. In fact, statistically, 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 very few have been. In 1995, Hillary Clinton made this famous speech in Beijing about women's rights. Sadly, many of the things she wanted to change are still a reality today. But what stood out for me the most was that only 30% of her audience were male. How can we affect change in the world when only half of it is invited or feel welcome to partic participate in the conversation? Men, I would like to take this opportunity to extend your formal invitation. Gender equality is your issue too. Because to date, I've seen my father's role as a parent being valued less by society because my, despite my needing his presence as a child as much as my mother. I've seen young men suffering from mental illness and able to ask for help for fear to make them look less macho. In fact, in the UK, suicide is the biggest killer of men between 20 to 49 years of age, eclipsing road accidents, cancer, and coronary heart disease. I've seen men made fragile and insecure by a distorted sense of what constitutes male success. Men don't have the benefits of equality either. We don't often talk about men being imprisoned by gender stereotypes, but I can see that they are and that they, when they are free, things will change for women as a natural consequence. If men don't have to be aggressive in order to be accepted, women won't feel compelled to be submissive. If men don't have to control, women won't have to be controlled. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all pursue gender on a spectrum, not as two opposing sexes.